If you're not particularly mechanically inclined, you may watch those who are with admiration, amazement, and exasperation because they have something you don't, an understanding of how things work and how things fit together. When they take something apart, they can reassemble it the way it was. When they say that they want to take a look under the hood, they can actually get the darn thing open. And when they need to change a flat, they don't spend 10 minutes trying to figure out which end of the jack is up. The good news is that you don't have to be born with a wrench in your hand to know how to fix things, even things as seemingly complicated as a car. I know, I've been there. The introduction tells you all about my automotive epiphany. Of course, the simplest tasks can sometimes be the biggest hurdles to overcome. After all, if you can't even figure out how to open the hood, how can you check the oil or the coolant level? That's why I begin this course with the basics. Simple jobs that you'll need to do again and again, like opening the hood, jacking up a car, and changing a tire. I also include instructions for filling the fuel tank yourself. It's cheaper than full service, a surefire method for taking anything apart and putting it back together again, and safety pointers that every mechanic, experienced and beginner, should heed. Before you tackle any job, it's wonderful to do things yourself. You spend less money, you get a sense of power knowing that you did it on your own, and you know that the job's been done right. Nevertheless, to avoid getting in over my head, I always ask myself the following questions before undertaking any job. Do I really want to do this? Will it be fun or horrendous? I try never to do anything that doesn't feel good unless it's absolutely necessary. Do I know how to do it? If not, where do I go to learn? Does it require such expensive tools that it would cost less to have someone do it for me than to buy those tools? Can I borrow or rent the tools I need? If I goof, can something be seriously damaged? Can I be hurt? How long will it take and what is my time worth? From that perspective, how much money will I save by doing it myself? You'll be happy to know that almost every job in this course should pass the test of these questions. If you find a task that doesn't, don't hesitate to turn it over to a professional. After you read enough to know that the job is definitely necessary, what it entails, whether the work has been done properly, and how to get satisfaction if it isn't. With that in mind, let's get on to the very first thing you need to know in order to work on your vehicle. Buying the right parts for your vehicle. Before you go shopping for parts to replace those on your vehicle, read the tips in this section carefully. They can help you avoid what's probably the most annoying part of any automotive job. Disabling your vehicle to work on it only to find that you need it to drive back to the store to exchange the stuff they sold you in error. Before I learned how to do it right, this happened at least two out of every three times on every job I did. This section tells you what you need to know when buying any part. Sections in other chapters that deal with jobs that require buying replacement parts provide tips on buying them, as well as what tools and other stuff you need for that task. Section 3 tells you how to buy specific tools and what they're used for. To buy the proper parts for your vehicle, you must know its specifications, or specs, as they're often called. Most of this information should be in your owner's manual, and a lot of it is also printed on metal tags or decals, located inside your hood. You can usually find these in front of the radiator, inside the fenders on the inside of the hood, anywhere the auto manufacturer thinks you'll find them. I know of one car that has its decal inside the lid of the glove compartment. These ID tags also provide a lot of other information about where the vehicle was made, what kind of paint it has, and so on. The service manual for your vehicle should have the specs for the parts you need, and the parts department at your dealership or a reputable auto supply store can also look them up for you. It's a good idea to stick with parts from the same manufacturer as those that your vehicle originally came with. That brand may be listed in a service manual for your vehicle. If you don't have a service manual, tell the sales clerk at the auto parts store that you want ODM, original equipment manufacturer, parts. Quality aftermarket parts are available as well, but unless you trust your parts seller's recommendations or you've already used a particular aftermarket brand and had good luck with it, stick with OEM parts. If you can't find specs for buying and gapping spark plugs in your owner's or service manual or on your vehicle, you'll find them in a tune-up specification guide called a spec sheet for short at an auto supply store. 
Buying the right plugs in Chapter 6 provides a sample spec sheet and shows you how to use it. I provide a specifications record in Section 6. Make a copy for each vehicle. You own and record the specifications for that vehicle on it. I keep a duplicate in my glove compartment so that I always have it when I shop for parts. When you go to buy parts, keep in mind that most professional mechanics get discounts at auto parts stores. Ask if you can get a discount given that you're installing the parts yourself. It can't hurt to try. Even if you don't get a price break on parts, you'll still be ahead of the game because you won't have to pay labor charges.